In today's video, we're going to be installing Arch Linux on my low end laptop. A lot of you guys in the comment section down below have been telling me for ages now to check out Arch Linux. And I've been a little bit scared because it looks really confusing from an outsider's point of view. I've never used it before. I've barely dived into Linux as a whole and people are already telling me to check out Arch Linux saying it's the best and it'll be the best thing for the laptop and all of this. Arch Linux is probably one of the most popular GNU types of Linux and it's got quite a cold following lots of people in my comment section and all over the internet so today we're going to make those people happy and we're going to go for it however we're not going to install linux the proper way well the hard way we're going to be using arch install to install this it makes it a lot easier there is still no menu but it allows us mere mortals to actually install arch linux on my system and we're also going to be running minecraft on there and seeing what kind of fps we get using it if you're new around here, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe down below. This video has taken a week to make, so I hope you guys will appreciate this. If you do, a like and a sub would be much appreciated. And also check out my Discord in the description down below. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so to install Arch Linux, we need to go to their website. I'll leave the link to it in the description down below, archlinux.org. And yeah, this is their website. It's a really useful website. They've got a wiki on here, forums and guides and stuff because if you're to install Arch Linux the hard way, this is definitely where you want to get all your information. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the download section here. And this is where you can download the ISO for Arch Linux. Now, the recommended way to download it is torrent it, basically. So you can either get a torrent link or a magnet link. And then just open that with your BitTorrent client of choice. I'm using Transmission, which I highly recommend. It's open source and it's not like uTorrent with loads of uh, ads and viruses and stuff. So yeah, I just use Transmission. It's a nice, clean BitTorrent client. So yeah, just open it with that and just let it download. All right, so now that it's downloaded, I've put it on my desktop here. Now, as usual, you just need to get Rufus, get a blank USB stick and make the USB, basically. It's nice and easy. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm actually going to be installing it in a virtual machine. Let's uh, show you how to install it. All right, so I've just booted off the ISO. I'm just going to go ahead and press enter and select the first option. All right, and this is what you're greeted with when you first load up Arch Linux. Yeah, no welcome screen, no menu, nothing. Yeah, so there's two ways you can install Arch Linux. The first way is the really complicated way, and that's run loads of commands, and uh, you have to really know what you're doing to do that. Watch lots of YouTube videos, and it's just very time consuming. But we're going to do it the easier way, which is using a script called Arch Install. It's built into Arch Linux, so you don't need to do anything. All you need to do when you get to this screen is just type in Arch Install, all one word, and press Enter. So think of this as an installer, but without the GUI and all the nice menus and stuff, it's pretty bare bones, but it does the job. So the first thing is language. You can just select your language here. Just use the arrow keys and enter to navigate this. So I'm going to go with English, keyboard layout. You can change that. I'm going to change that to UK, local language. I'm just going to make that GB and local encoding. I'm just going to leave. So just press escape. Bootloader, I'm going to leave on Grub. I'd recommend Grub. It's, it does the job. Swap, we'll leave that on True. And hostname is basically like the name of your system. So you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, you can select a root password. If you don't choose a root password, root will be disabled. So I'd recommend setting one up. There we go. And yeah, my password is pretty weak. Do you still want to use it? Yes. Type it one more time for verification. There we go. So now we can set up a user account. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. This will be your username. So I'm going to select a username here, make a Dan and then set up a password. And then again, it's a weak password, but we'll type it one more time for verification. Then select here if you want your user to be a super user. So yeah, I definitely want that because I want to execute commands in the terminal. Select yes to that. And there we go. My user has been set up. If you want to add another one, just press add a user. If you're done, confirm and exit. Then in profile here, this is where you want to select your flavor, if you like, of Arch Linux. So you can have a desktop profile, minimal, server, or Xorg. When I first set this up, I went for minimal and it was very confusing. So I'd recommend selecting desktop if you're going to be using this on your computer for gaming and general tasks and stuff. All the other ones I'd just leave alone. So I'm going to go with desktop. 
And here is where you select your desktop environment. So this is all kind of personal opinion. There's loads of videos out there comparing the different desktop environments. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. Some people go for cinnamon, some people like Gnome or Gnome. But what I've gone for on my laptop is KDE Plasma, which is very similar to Windows. You've got a taskbar and um, start menu and stuff. So if you're a Windows user, I recommend KDE Plasma and you guys should feel at home. So I'm gonna select KDE. This is where you select your graphics driver. So if you've got an AMD graphics card, select that. If you've got Intel, select that. If you've got Nvidia, go for that. I'm gonna go for VMware because I'm using a virtual machine right now. For audio, I would just leave that on Pipewire by default. It should work on most computers. For kernels here, you can select whichever kernel you want, but I'd just go for Linux, just leave that on default. And additional packages is a pretty interesting one. As you can see here, if you desire a web browser such as Firefox or Chromium, specify. So we're gonna go for Firefox, so just type in Firefox like that. And if you want to install something else, just press a space and then write whatever you want. But I'm just going to go for Firefox for now. There we go. Network configuration, I would just leave that. This is where you set up your time zone. Automatic time sync, I just leave that on true. And optional repositories, I'm just going to go for multi-lib. And there we go. That is it. So let's just go ahead and press save configuration. One thing I seem to have forgotten here is hard drives. Now I made a big mistake when I installed Arch Linux on my laptop and I had Windows already installed on my drive. I thought, nah, no big deal, just select the drive, it should wipe it and whatever. But that caused loads of issues and I wouldn't recommend it. So if you are going to install this on your computer, make sure you wipe your hard drive completely. So yeah, what you want to do is just select your drive here once it's all wiped. There should just be two options here. One should just be your USB and the other should just be your hard drive. So yeah, just select that. And for disk layout, I'm just gonna go for wipe all selected drives and use a best effort default partition layout. Just avoids all headaches in the long run. So yeah, let's just go for that. And for the file type, I'm gonna go for ext4. All right, so I think that's all done now. Now all we need to do is just press install. Press enter to continue. And yeah, just leave it to do its thing. Nice and easy, much easier than doing this manually. Whoever created the Arch install script is a god. Just leave it to do its thing. This should take about 10 minutes. Looks really confusing what it's doing, but just leave it to do its thing. Don't touch anything. And we'll be back once we've booted into KDE Plasma. All right, so it's just finished doing its thing. Just go ahead and press yes to this. And now it says installation complete. You may now reboot. So just type in reboot, press enter. All right, so I'm just powering up my virtual machine and here we go. Here's Grub. Just select the first option, press enter. And yeah, loads of stuff will come up on your screen. Shouldn't take too long. And here we are. Here is KDE Plasma. So yeah, this is the user account that we set up. Just type in your passwords here and the KDE logo will come up and it will start preparing my desktop for me. And boom, here we are on Arch Linux. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead now and go on my laptop and let's install Minecraft and see what it's like on a low-end laptop. All right, guys, and here we are on my low-end laptop running Arch Linux. If you don't believe me, let me just open up the console here. Just make that bigger. I don't know why that's gone like that. Neo fetch. Boom. Arch Linux. Did I mention I'm an Arch user? I use Arch, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is Arch Linux running on my low end laptop. By the way, if you're wondering, that's kind of like a joke in the community. Lots of Arch Linux users like to say that they're Arch Linux users to other people and it's it just becomes a thing. Once you use Arch Linux, you just kind of become one of them. So yeah, that is me now. So yeah, as I said, KDE Plasma is a lot like Windows. We've got our taskbar and everything down here. So we've got some pre-installed stuff that I'm probably not going to use. We've got games, we've got Minecraft, we'll go into that in a minute. I've installed Discord and Firefox and just some utilities. Arc is used for installing stuff, I believe, and Emoji Selector. I don't know why that comes as standard on here. If you compare this to something like Pop OS or Ubuntu or Zorin OS, there's pretty much nothing that comes pre-installed as standard. Most of the stuff that is pre-installed is just from my desktop environment anyway. So if I went with a more stripped down version, I'm sure this would easily be the lightest operating system I've ever run on this thing. And it's really snappy as well. You just open something and boom, you're there. It could really kick new life into old PCs. We've got the Dolphin File Explorer here, which is pretty familiar if you're a Windows user. 
Now, one of the things that I did have problems with when I first installed Arch Linux on here was I had Wi-Fi and networking problems. Although I installed Linux just fine, for some reason, after I opened up KDE, it just, the internet just didn't work. So what I needed to do was I needed to enable Network Manager, which for some reason was disabled right out the box, which was really weird. But after I did that and enabled that, internet worked just fine. And I do have Wi-Fi working on here as well, but it's not using the laptop's Wi-Fi cards. I'm just using one of those USB Wi-Fi dongles. So if you are installing this on a laptop, it's just something to bear in mind. So you probably will have a bit of a headache trying to find the right Wi-Fi drivers for your laptop. But other than that, it's been really good. And KDE feels really Windows-like, makes me feel really at home. Got all the stuff here that I need. And yeah, it's good. So installing Minecraft is a little bit trickier than that. I'll leave a video down in the description down below on how to install Minecraft on Arch Linux. I basically just copied exactly what they did. I'm not going to try and reproduce it in this video because I'll probably end up messing something up and then Minecraft just won't work for me. But yeah, basically on Arch Linux, there's a Minecraft installer. You need to install Git and then you just Git clone that repository and then just uh, install it as normal and it should just work. But yeah, let's go ahead and run vanilla 1.8.9 like I normally do in these tests and see how it runs. All right, and just like that, we have opened up Minecraft. That was really quick. So yeah, let's go ahead and play a single player creative world here. All right, so here we are. Bear in mind we're on vanilla 1.8.9. We look at our video settings here, pretty much as low as you can go really. I mean, we could put the render distance down, but that's not really much point. V-Sync off, all of these good settings here. How much FPS are we gonna get? Put your predictions now in the comments. We are getting 12 FPS. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been great to be honest with you. I think that's mainly down to the laptop rather than Arch Linux itself because Arch Linux has been really good. We are outputting to my display here, but I have disabled the laptop's display just to make things fair. FPS is not the best to be honest with you guys. 15 FPS we're getting. All right, so just loaded up 1.8.9 with Optifine here. So yeah, if we just take a look at my video settings here, these are the settings we're running with. Should probably make that on large. So yeah, pretty, pretty low settings really. Can turn off most of the stuff here. Turn off animations as well, apart from flames and potions. Put on fast math, fast render as well. And we've obviously got VBOSS on as well. So big reveal. What FPS do you think we're going to get now? not going to use the debug menu because you guys always scream at me. We are getting, you're not going to believe this, the same FPS. Well, a little bit more. We're getting 19 now. Honestly, I don't know what the problem is. I've tried updating my Java, as I said. I've tried graphics drivers. I don't remember this laptop performing this badly, even when I had Windows on it. So yeah, let me know if you've got any suggestions in the comments down below. It just seems to really suck the performance on here, which is really annoying. Right, so just loaded up Notro Client. If you guys don't know what Notro Client is, it's my own custom PvP client. Lots of people use my client on low end PCs out there and they say it really helps their FPS. So let's try it on this one. Still getting about 15 FPS, 13, 14 FPS. Not great, really. My client really hasn't made a difference here over Optifine. I really don't know what this could be. It's it's kind of annoying now. We're at least getting like 30 FPS before on various different versions of Windows and stuff. So I really don't know what to do with this laptop. All right, so here we are on Hypixel Lobby. Right, let's try and play a 1v1. Can we win a duel on Arch Linux? This is for all the Arch Linux users out there. Oh my God, my FPS is bad when I pull back a bow. This is like playing a stop frame animation. I cannot play. Oh. Oh, I think he let me get that. He let me get a couple of hits on him. Yeah, I've it's official. I've let the Arch Linux users down. I'm sorry. But it's this computer. If I had, if I had a better computer, I'd, I'd do you guys proud. Honestly, this is not fun. So since I can't play 1.19, I'm going to try and play the latest version I possibly can on this laptop and see how that runs. But given how 1.8.9's run, even with Optifine and my client, I haven't got high hopes. If you guys are wondering what error I get on Minecraft 1.19 when I try and open it, here it is right here. Doesn't look like it's related to Java, but if you guys could help me in the comment section down below, that'd be much appreciated. And I'll probably do a follow up video on Minecraft on Arch very soon once I get all my issues solved. I also want to try and get Lunar Client working as well on here. That might make a difference, might not. 
Alright guys, a breakthrough has been made. We've managed to get Minecraft 1.16.5 working on here, which I didn't have to mess with any Java or anything like that. It just seemed to have worked. Let's go ahead and try and play a slightly newer version of Minecraft on the low-end laptop running Linux. Alright guys, here we go. We haven't crashed just yet. So yeah, let's have a look at our FPS. Oh, <laughs> 8 FPS. Let's go. I mean, I knew it was going to be bad, but bear in mind we haven't got Optifine or anything. This is purely vanilla. I don't think I'm going to be bothered to install Optifine on here. It is laggy. Pretty much unplayable. So yeah, that's going to be the video, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. I know a lot of you guys have wanted me to try out Arch Linux on this channel, and I've finally done it. So I hope you guys are all happy. I will probably be doing a follow-up video once I learn a little bit more about Arch Linux. I definitely want to try and customize my desktop and get that all looking really nice and clean. And I definitely want to try and get Luna Client working and try and get the performance a little bit better than what we've seen in this video. If you guys want to help me out with that, leave your comments and suggestions in the comments. And yeah, thank you guys all for watching. Leave a like on this video and I will see you next time. Peace.